When it comes to making a video game, the most important thing is to have a creative mind, but obviously the game isn't gonna make itself. One of the many challenges of making a video game is somehow controlling the logic of the game. Like what's gonna happen if I click this button. You know, those sort of things. Which is achieved by using various methods on different game engines. Now, the most popular and the most flexible way is by coding. Which is, by the way, how I make my games. Now, in Godot, you can use either C Sharp or GDScript, which has some similarities to Python and was made to be used with the Godot engine. Now, there used to be a third option called Visual Script, which was introduced back in Godot version 3.0, but it was discontinued in Godot 4.0, one of the reasons being people just prefer to use GDScript instead. But I mean, did it deserve to die? Now, to see it for myself, I downloaded a version of Godot that still had the Visual Script in it, and with that out of the way, it was time to start Visual Scripting. Okay, so where do you even start? Maybe you just make a regular script and then convert it to Visual Script? I don't know. Okay, so you apparently choose Visual Script when you're making a new script. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna try to stay away from tutorials as much as I can to see if I can figure this out by myself. Okay, let's say we wanna move this cube when we press our arrow keys on the keyboard. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing here is that it's inheriting from a node. So I'm gonna change that to node 3D, which was called spatial in Godot 3. So if this was in GDScript, I would just change the position property of the node. But do we even have properties in Visual Script? Okay, so I've been looking for a position property, but I really could not find anything. And apparently, position is just called translation in Godot 3. I mean, it's been a while since I used Godot 3, so... So, I managed to find a set translation node that I could use it to move the cube with. Now, of course we need to do that when the player is actually pressing a button. So, I was playing with this action node for a while now, and I was like, where is the key? And apparently, in your inspector tab is where you put the action. So, that's interesting. Also, I don't think you can just connect these two together. Another cool thing is that the data types are colored so you can see what node you can connect to another. So that tells me we need an if statement between them. So after searching forever, I finally got an if statement. It was called condition by the way. And with that out of the way, there was only one thing left to do before I could announce myself the king of visual script. Okay, so I had to watch a tutorial to figure this out. Now, apparently, we need to override the process method for all of this to work. I mean, how am I supposed to know that? I only code GDScript, so... And there we go, we finally made something happen on the screen using Visual Script. Now, listen, I can go on and on about how you can make a character controller using Visual Script. And since this is not really a Visual Script tutorial, I'm gonna skip past this part. I'm gonna explain this as quickly as I possibly can. So, we're basically getting the input of the player in this part, and then we're combining them together as a vector 3 to make a direction. And then, after normalizing that, we're multiplying it with the player speed times the delta. And then we're adding all of that to the current position of the player. Now quickly, let's fix this. Now I think we should be done, so let's play this. And there we go, we finally made a game in Visual Script. Well, I mean, using Visual Script. Now, as much fun as this was, what if you wanted to do this in 2024? Well, lucky you, there is an add-on called Godot Orchestrator, which should be pretty similar to Visual Script. Now, obviously, I had to check it out myself, so I downloaded its latest version from GitHub and was ready to fire up my latest version of Godot. Now, the first thing you'll notice after installing it is that you'll get a whole new Orchestrator tab. Also, you had the Orchestrator available as a language to select when you're making a new script. Now, the Orchestrator tab itself was more or less similar to Visual Script. You also just override the method that you want your code to be in. Also, the other cool thing is that you can resize the nodes and you also have the action, but it's called input action here. So after setting the input map, 
I pretty much did the same as I did in Visual Script. Now there are some differences, but the essence of it should be the same. Now I don't know if there is a better way of doing this, but I'm simply making a direction with the inputs. Now the other thing I noticed is that you actually have to connect the normalize method to the process or whatever function you're running on. Now I don't know if there's a way, but I really couldn't define a variable in the variables tab. I had to bring it in the graph editor to set it. Now I'm not sure if I'm saying this correct, but I had to set it in an event and so I chose init event since that's gonna run first. The other cool thing I found is how organized it was with different data types. Like you have different nodes to do the same operation with different data types. I mean you even have a node that multiplies an int with a color. For example, back in Visual Script, let's say you wanted to multiply this float by a vector 3. You would either get a float to float multiplication or a vector 3 to vector 3 multiplication. Now the way I got around this was to change the type to any. Now this would probably get out of hands if you don't know what you're doing. But it worked fine for my cases. Now for this one, I'm using a character controller to move the cube with instead of just hard coding the position. Now the other interesting thing I found was that you could only connect a method to one other method in a sequence. Which if you think about it makes sense, you can't run two methods at the same time. So if I try to connect a method to multiple ones, it's not gonna let me do that, it's gonna switch to the latest one. And if I want all of them to run, I have to connect them in a sequence. Now in Visual Script, that also held true, but you could still connect a method to multiple ones at the same time, which could definitely confuse you. Now obviously, you could still do it in a sequence, but like, why would you even have that? Now for some reason, my variable wasn't getting initialized, so I changed the init event to ready event, and that kind of solved the problem. So yeah, I'm not sure what would be the best way to do this. And then for some reason, I was multiplying my player speed with delta, even though I was using a character controller. So I got rid of that, and this is basically basically my graph. I'm not gonna lie, this does look more organized than Visual Script. I mean, it's not the exact same logic, but I would say I had more fun making a game in Orchestrator. Okay, so why is this so fast? Okay, never mind, just gonna decrease the speed. Okay, so there we go, we have a moving cube using Orchestrator. And honestly, it wasn't even as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I actually quite enjoyed it, honestly. Now, it did take some time to get used to, but once you get the basics, you're good to go. Now, it's probably not gonna replace GDScript for me anytime soon, but I do see the potential of making a full game in it. Especially if you're someone who doesn't wanna write code, or if you're just trying to learn programming for the first time. Either way, it was definitely worth checking out. And so, thank you everyone for sticking till the end. Really hope you enjoyed this one, and as always, I'll see you soon.